uh, on the twenty uh, seventh of uh, September, early morning Indian time, uh, a spacecraft named DART was deliberately crashed on a asteroid. Asteroids are like space rock to deflect its path, and in this uh, uh, collision. the spacecraft of course uh, completely became hundreds of pieces so let's understand why this was done and what was the objective uh you have to go back to 66 million years ago to understand why this project was done 66 million years ago a asteroid of a size around 10 kilometers uh, fell on earth they collided with the uh, earth and uh, in this event about 75% of uh, organism living uh, organism on earth completely got decimated that's when uh, dinosaurs became extinct if some such event takes place today then uh, the uh, tsunami and the volcanic eruption and uh, the darkening of the sky because of the dust being thrown uh, a winter like situation all over the world will decimate the human civilization and also uh, perhaps uh, make extinct a large number of uh, species that live on earth today of course the danger of a very large asteroid striking earth is a bit remote it's not uh, it's it's a very very uh, low probability but if it happens the effect is going to be very devastating if the size of uh, the asteroid was about uh, let's say 140 uh, meters 140 meters the uh, asteroid which killed the dinosaurs is about 10 to 15 kilometers so if you have uh, something like about 140 meters a city like uh, delhi will be completely erased okay uh, so people have been watching the sky for such uh, space rocks which is uh, orbiting the uh, solar system if it will cross the path of earth okay so we know that there are millions of rocks small and big in the uh, solar system which is orbiting the uh, uh, sun okay uh, uh, particularly objects which are more than 1 meter which can cause uh, some amount of uh, uh, destruction on earth if it falls on earth are being continuously watched there are more than uh, 20000 such uh, near earth objects which are around the uh, uh, orbit of earth okay of course not all of them are going to fall on earth but they are around so we uh, there is a there is a continuous watch on this object for some time okay uh, of this uh, 20000 around 2000 uh, have paths uh, which uh, which can come very dangerously close to earth for example uh, on a night you can see many such uh, near earth uh, objects which are uh, moving in the sky and recently uh one uh, asteroid called watch came within just uh, 3.6 lakh kilometers uh, which is uh, something like uh, uh, sorry 36 lakh kilometers so which means that it was kind of passing very near to earth okay of course there was no danger from the asteroid watch but if it was much closer then uh, possibly there is a possibility that uh, it could have hit earth so the question is can we deflect such uh, asteroids which have a potential of uh, hitting the earth okay which can cross the earth so that is why the nasa came up with this idea to uh, knock a asteroid of about uh, 170 meters wide okay but of course that's uh, really very far away this asteroid is very far away but to knock using a spacecraft okay so this is called as double asteroid uh, uh, mission right so they so actually this asteroids are uh, twins there is a central asteroid uh, which is uh, much more bigger than the other asteroid something like about 870 meters and the small asteroid is uh, going around the big asteroid like a moon so people sometimes call it as a moonlet okay so it goes like that so the idea was to hit the smaller asteroid and change its path a wee bit so that uh, because of that the whole system will uh, also get affected and then uh, change its uh, uh, trajectory so they wanted to test so that's why this uh, 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 project was done the technique that was used is called as kick uh, which is uh, essentially meaning that kinetic impact technique 
So what is this kinetic impact technique? Uh, if you have a big uh, truck, okay, uh, if you uh, drive your moped very, very, very fast and hit the truck, of course, the moped will uh, uh, break into pieces, but the truck will also see a small vibration, right? Because you are going in a high speed, because the momentum will be more. Momentum is uh, your speed into mass, okay? But whereas a, a truck which is stationary, the momentum is near zero. So, okay, so uh, because the velocity is zero, because it's stationary, right? So, because of that, I mean, uh, you will be able to make a small dent in uh, the uh, truck, even the truck, even though the truck is very big. Similarly, if you uh, hit a, a space rock at the speed of something like about 6.6 .6 kilometer per second, which is uh, roughly about uh, 25,000 kilometer per hour, you know, that kind of a speed, a 600 kilogram spacecraft will be able to uh, shake a, a 5 million uh, kilogram uh, asteroid. That's the, that's the idea. Okay, that's called as uh, kick technology. Uh, that's what uh, 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 the NASA tried in this uh, particular mission. Uh, when uh, you are having such a small object in space, you know, just only 160 meters wide, 100, uh, 780 meters wide, it's very, very small, right? So when it is very far away, uh, even in the best of telescope, it appears as a small spot. Even to this uh, uh, spacecraft, it was just a dot. Only when it was about four hours away from the uh, uh, collision that the spacecraft was able to identify the two separately. Okay, so it's only in the last four hours it actually changed its direction and then went on to hit the uh, uh, small asteroid. Uh, and whatever they had, uh, you know, aimed the central point, it uh, uh, apparently uh, hit it around about 17 meters slightly away. So, largely a success in terms of uh, uh, attacking the uh, small asteroid. That's what they are looking at. So, when uh, you have a, a, a spacecraft like this, okay, and uh, impacting on the asteroid, what will happen is that it is uh, uh, hitting head on, right? It's uh, hitting head on. So, because of that, the uh, speed of this uh, asteroid in the frontal direction or uh, the angular momentum, if you have to be very precise, will reduce a bit because it was a head-on hit, okay? Because the angular momentum reduces a bit, the new orbit will be smaller, okay? So, basically, this will go nearer to the primary asteroid. So, the distance will reduce. Because the distance reduce, uh, this whole system trajectory will change. That's the idea, okay? So, the trajectory will change. Uh, these two together are orbiting the sun uh, with the approximately uh, 700 plus days, once in 700 plus days, once in 800 days, it is orbiting the uh, sun. In that, you will see a change. Okay, this small asteroid was going around the big asteroid uh, approximately once in 11 hours and 55 minutes. So, due to this change, there can be a difference of uh, as less as 75 seconds to as big as 10 minutes, depending on the nature of this asteroid. See, imagine you are throwing a ball at a, a solid wall. If you throw the same ball at a sand pit, in the solid wall, you will see that the bounces, uh, ball is bouncing back. But whereas in a, a sand pit, you will find that it is making an impact crater and there is not much of a bounce, right? So the reaction is different. In the same way, suppose the uh, asteroid was a solid rock. Uh, the uh, difference in the period, orbital period, will be very small, something like about 75 seconds. But if the asteroid was actually composed of smaller rocks held together loosely by the gravity, then because of the seed, many of these objects will fly away. Each of them will take some amount of uh, momentum. So the remaining uh, piece, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, asteroid, will lose quite a bit amount of uh, momentum. So there may be a reduction in something like about 10 minutes in its orbital period. right? So that's also one of the tests that uh, uh, NASA was doing here to find out what kind of maximum minimum uh, change you will be able to do it. Why? Because if you want to deflect some uh, asteroid coming toward the Earth, you need to do it well in advance because the deflection will be very small. But if you do it well in advance, because of the distance, uh, it will really miss the Earth. Instead of hitting the Earth, there will be a near miss. That's what you want, right? So 
that was the test that was done. Uh, the distance between these two asteroids were about 1.2 kilometers, but after the hit, one expects that uh, it will change. That's what uh, people are looking at. So when the small asteroid goes around the big asteroid, the uh, total brightness will change. Okay, When they are side to side, both of them reflect sunlight. But uh, assume that the small asteroid is behind the big asteroid or in front of the big asteroid, the total amount of light reflected will be small, right? So there will be a dimming. So there will be a periodic dimming. So by looking at uh, in what period the dimming is happening, you can actually calculate how much time it is taking to go around the bigger asteroid, right? So from that, you can see whether actually the uh, orbit has changed or not. So people are observing it even before the hit, and people are now observing it after the hit. And in coming months, we will know exactly what is the kind of uh, impact it had had. Okay. So uh, when uh, it was launched, of course, uh, the uh, at the uh, start of launch, the uh, Earth was here. Okay. When uh, the uh, Earth and Dart are uh, in the position on May uh, 2022. Okay. And uh, the impact takes place here. Okay. You should understand that all objects are moving in the uh, space. They are not stationary. So it's a very, very tricky uh, maneuver. That's what NASA has demonstrated that it is possible, it is feasible with today's technology to do that. Okay. This is actual images uh, uh, taken uh, by uh, the uh, ASI uh, uh, from telescopes and all that. So you can see that uh, the impact actually happening. And because of the impact, the uh, asteroid, the plumes from the asteroid are uh, getting away. Learn the dust and everything is being blown away because of the impact. Okay. While one reason for uh, undertaking such a mission like DART is to deflect the uh, you know killer asteroids coming toward the Earth. Many experts say there is also another reason, another not so spoken uh, or hidden reason. There are certain elements which are called as rare Earth elements. They are rare Earth elements because to mine them on Earth, it's very rare. I mean, like uh, you find them very rarely on Earth. Okay, its concentration is so low that uh, you'll have to uh, mine a very large region to get it. But these uh, rare earth elements are key to the emerging technologies. You look at a windmill, you look at an electric vehicle, you look at a, a battery for a future, okay, or a hydrogen cell. You know, all renewable energies that we talk about, including solar cells, need. Uh, a substantial amount of rare earth elements. Rare earth elements are obviously rare. They are not available so easily. There is a short supply and it's very highly polluting. So people are saying, why don't we go to space and these asteroids are full of rare earth elements. They are rich in rare earth elements. Why don't we mine from this uh, asteroids and bring it back? If you look at uh, Luna 16, uh, in the 1970s, it's one of the Soviet mission, landed on moon, used a driller to drill uh, on the moon surface, took moon sample, and then brought it back to Earth. Okay, so it's called as sample return mission. So that's a beginning. Okay, so the same technology can be now uh, upgraded, uh, bettered, uh, you know, robotic uh, missions uh, can be added, robotic uh, missionary can be added. And then you can actually start mining a, a asteroid and then bring those uh, rare earth elements back to Earth so that you don't need to pollute on Earth. You don't need to build uh, uh, huge mines which will be uh, polluting Earth. Second, uh, if you can deflect an asteroid from hitting the Earth, you can also def use the same technology to deflect an asteroid to come very near to the Earth, okay? somewhere near the moon or somewhere between Earth and Mars, okay, so some position like that. Then you can create a, a space mining factory in that area and then bring asteroids and then mine it. You know, this is also uh, possible in future. Uh, from a single asteroid, you'll be able to get enough material to uh, meet the needs for many, many years. So this is also another purpose for which uh, perhaps in future the DART mission will uh, mark the inauguration.